such wisdom as I have acquired. I have had a long life. I have had, had much time for thought as I lay alone in my stall. And I think I may say that I understand the nature of life on this earth as well as any animal now living. It is about this that I wish to speak to you. Now, comrades, what is the nature of this life of ours? Let us face it. Our lives are miserable, laborious, and short. We are born. We are given just so much food as will keep the breath in our bodies. And those of us who are capable of it are forced to work to the last atom of our strength. And the very instant that our useless usefulness has come to an end, we are slaughtered with hideous cruelty. No animal in England knows the meaning of a happy or leisure after he is a year old. No animal in England is free. The life of an animal is misery and slavery. That is the plain truth. But is this simply part of the order of nature? Is it because this land of ours is so should have been breeding up sturdy cubs. 
years lose their power, Jones will sell you to the knacker, who will cut your throat and boil you down for the foxhounds. As for the dogs, when they grow old and toothless, Jones tries ties a brick round their necks and drown them in the nearest pond. that all the evils of this life of ours spring from the tyranny of human beings. Only get rid of men and the brothers of our labor would be our own. Almost overnight we would become rich and free. What then must we do? Why work night and day, body and soul, for the overthrow of the human race. That is my message to you, comrades, rebellion. I do not know when that rebellion will come. It might be in a week or in a hundred years. But I know, as surely as I see this straw beneath my feet, that sooner or later justice will be done. Fix your eyes on that, comrades. Throughout the short remainder of your lives, and above all, pass this message of mine to those who come after you, so that future generations shall carry on the struggle until it, until it is victorious. And remember, comrades, your resolution must never falter. No argument must lead you astray. Never listen when they tell you that men and the animals have a common interest, that the prosperity of the one is the prosperity of the others. It is all lies. Man serves the interest of no creature except himself. And among us animals, let there be perfect unity, perfect comradeship, in the struggle, all men are enemies, all animals are comrades. At this moment, there was a tremendous uproar. While Major was speaking, four large rats had crept out of their holes and were sitting on their hindquarters, listening to him. The dogs had suddenly caught sight of them, and it was only by a swift touch of their holes that the rats saved their lives. Major raised his trotter for silence. Comrades, he said, here is a point that must be settled. The wild creatures, such as rats and rabbits, are they our friends or our enemies? Let us put it to the vote. I propose this question agreed by an overwhelming majority that rats were comrades. There were only four dissentients, the three dogs and the cat, who was afterwards discovered to have voted on both sides. Major continued, I have little more to say. I merely repeat, remember always your strong, clever or 
dogs in the yard. He sees the gun, which always stood in a corner of his bedroom, and let fly a charge of number six shot into the darkness. The pellets buried themselves in the wall of the barn, and the meeting broke up hurriedly. Everyone fled to his own sleeping place. The birds jumped onto their perches. The animals settled down in the straw, and the whole farm was asleep in a moment.